I have a new appreciation for Palmetto State Armory. Yeah. Uh, I will definitely say that. Uh, the CEO recently did a podcast uh, with Gun Owners of America on their YouTube channel. And he kind of explains, like, you know, when I was doing AR, a lot of AR builds in my when I first got started, I always thought because PSA was so cheap that they were more of a budget-friendly gun company and not high quality, like, you yeah. know, even up to aero standards and stuff like that. But after watching that episode, it's like, oh, wait. Yeah. Maybe these guys are, like, really good, but their business model is a lot different. Yeah, because he, he says in it that he does, he's not here to make money. Yeah. So I'm going to, before we get too far into this, I'm going to actually play a little clip of his interview. And this is exactly why Palmetto State Armory is cheap and not super expensive like a lot of your other guns. When I look at firearms, I look at, you know, we have to cover our costs, right? Because right. you have to make some money. And then I look at, we have to have a little bit of markup to invest in the next thing. And then, so we put a price on it and that's the price. And I know what it costs to make things. And a lot of people will say, well, PSA sells, they're selling cheap. They're cutting some kind of corners. No, the, the actual answer is everybody else is making boatloads of money. I don't think that you really need to do that. I don't think you should ask, you know, why are we selling so cheap? The real question is, why are some companies trying to make so much on one handgun? I get it. They're doing a a lot of marketing and everything, but I know what it costs to make the gun. Like, we make it. We make our barrel. We make our frame. Well, we don't make our frame. We we contract that, but we make the barrel. We make the slide. We make most of the parts except for stampings and polymer. We don't do that. But I know what we pay for them is not terribly much. And I look at what people are selling a gun for, like you're keeping people out of the hobby. And I'm trying to get people in. So there is that we have to cover our costs and we have to have some markup. And the markup generally is to invest in the next project, right? Past that, we are not publicly traded. We don't have to return. It's me, Ed and Julian. Ed, we joke about him. He's the coolest redneck you'll ever meet. (laughs) Great construction guy. Great to have on board. And Julian and I are just huge gun guys, right? And so our thing is if we can get more people to buy because it's a more reasonable price point, spread more freedom, that's what we would rather do. Dagger's a fantastic gun. I could sell it for a lot more. We could make a lot more money, and, you know, I could have flown my private jet here <laughs> <laughs> instead I drove, you know. Uh, but, you know, I, I just think that if we're going to follow our vision, which is to spread as much freedom, we don't need to mark everything up a ridiculous amount. And that's kind of just been our vision. So that's the most (laughs) down-to-earth CEO I think I've ever heard. Like, they're not about the money, like most companies are. They want to make as much profit and everything as they can. They want to get more people into the Second Amendment. Yeah. I And there's they go through the whole kind of how they started, and and there's a bunch of cool stuff that not a lot of people know about Palmetto State Armory. Oh, yeah. And... I, I just got a new respect for that company. Hmm. So it's kind of, so I've always th- thought, and just like a lot of other people is like, well, they're cheap because they're probably not quality parts. Yeah. Well, it turns out they're actual quality parts. And he goes into this thing where, where they actually bought a bunch of FN barrels and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, in today's day and age, you know, an AR 15 lowers an AR 15 lower at that. And the parts are all the same. They're just not making a lot of money because they want, to make it cheap for people to get into it, to get into it. And yeah, because, and then uh, later in the episode, he goes, you know, with AR 15s, if you buy one and you get into it, it's it just snowballs from there. <laughs> and it is. Yeah. I mean, he even says it's like adult Legos. That's really cool from Palmetto State Armory. Never heard of him. I haven't, but I, I love the vision. That's a great yeah. idea. They're and getting uh, people in. I think, you know, I mean, what's a handgun average from them, you think? So, so like a Glock 19 uh, Gen 3 is, say, 500 bucks. Mm-hmm. What he mentioned there was their dagger, which is the gun right there behind it, the two-tone oh, right okay. there. Yeah. That is, I mean, they ran a sale on those for 250 for It's the half base the model. price. Yeah. And it's it's not half the gun. And that's basically the exact same gun as a Glock 19, mm-hmm. but just a little bit. And they have so many more options that you can get with yeah. that gun than a Glock 19. Mm-hmm. Glock 19, you get... A couple different options depending on what model. But this, I mean, if you go on their website and look at the dagger, 
it's like, holy shit, how do you decide? Yeah. yeah. They have <clears throat> different slide cuts, the all sorts of different stuff, and it's almost like I'm very indecisive. So I'm like, I'm just gonna get the basic one. Yeah. Like, <laughs> give me something basic. And but it's crazy. Yeah, I was looking on there just for the Glock 19. I was like, for a slide through Glock is ridiculous, especially yeah. if you want an RMR cut. Yeah. You go on there, you get it for like 200. Yep. RMR cut, Cerakoted, and it'll just go right on. Right. So I'm like, oh, what do I do? They're geared more towards a blue collar worker. So hit, their vision is to get as many people as they can into guns. And once you get into it, you're in. Like you're yeah. just going to buy more. I wish they'd tell us how much like their markup is. Cause then you can start comparing like, okay, so it really costs this much to make this part. So how much is like arrow or let's say Daniel defense really marking theirs up or Wilson combat. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and Wilson combat doesn't really advertise. No, they don't. I think like he said, they just want private jets. Yeah. Well, who doesn't? <laughs> that's, that's that guy. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. But it's kind of cool learning about the history. Uh, so JJE Capital is actually the parent company of Palmetto State, but it's basically just the guys that founded it, yeah. kind of entered it under that. And uh, their project is to continue spreading the First and Second Amendment freedoms to everyday Americans. And it's cool because, I mean, so they believe that ensuring freedom should be at the forefront of leading innovation and advancement in the firearm industry for everyone. So that's kind of what they're doing with their price point. And so with all of that, um, and it's really cool because their mission, and they have this on their website, is sell as many guns to as many law-abiding Americans as possible. Yeah, uh, and also on their website, they say, you know, putting guns into common use, and this is this, that word term common use comes up in a lot of the ATF stupid, uh, fun rules that they're trying to do. So putting guns into common use is important legal defense established by the Supreme Court that safeguards the rights of people against tyranny by prohibiting restrictions on firearms found to be in common use. Putting any gun into common use projects against any attempt by the government to further infringe on the Second Amendment right of Americans, which we've recently seen in the SBA or pistol braces. Yep. So that's awesome right there. And then their mission is to maximize freedom, not their profits. They want to sell as many AR-15 and AK-47 rifles as they can and put them into common use in America today. Their focus isn't to make massive amounts of money to spread freedom as far as, and they want to spread freedom as far and as wide as possible. Probably what I wish every other gun company would do, would yeah. have that vision. Like, I think that's, we're to the point where we need that. I think that we need that not just in the gun industry, but... In life in general. Yeah. Like throughout retail, everything. Like you should be wanting people to come to you because you make quality at a fair price. I've built stuff using their parts kits. And one of his things is like they're, they don't sell a lot. Of, they sell complete up, you know, rifles. They sell complete uppers and stuff like that. But he said their main business is selling parts complete and uppers and then the build kits. Yeah. He's like, most people, you know, come to us because they want to build their gun like a lot of us do. You know, they they probably buy a lower from somebody where, somewhere else and then they go buy their parts kits or even their upper and stuff like that. So they sell. I mean, they I got he was saying they build like 2000 uppers a day. Yeah, 2000 a day and about a thousand wow. of them are gone in a day. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's crazy. So the I recommend uh, looking up that podcast. It's on the Gun Owners of American YouTube channel. And it's really cool. There's a lot of insight and stuff that you don't realize that. Yeah. Palmetto State Armor is actually a great company. Like, I have a lot more respect for them now yeah. than him, I did. Him talking about the backstory and how they got into it was intriguing. And then, like, how he's talking about FN and how they came to talks and everything. It was like, what? Mm -hmm. This is crazy. Like, yeah. FN was lost a military contract. Yeah. And so they went in and bought all their barrels that were left over. And FN was like, well, wait, do you realize how many barrels we have? Yeah. He's and, like, well, they just brought up a minivan. <laughs> they yeah. said, and they just boop. And they said it was probably bottomed out. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> and obviously they've grown since then. They make their own barrels now. And they also make parts for other yeah. uh, gun companies. So, you know, if you bought from somebody else, it may not be labeled as a PSA, but, but it's it probably is. a how many yeah. armory uh, hmm. manufactured one. They have uh, they have several stores um, on the East Coast. Yeah, 
I was to, uh, I was working a hurricane out in South Carolina, and they have a store in Somerville. So I stopped by there, and this is before I was in FFL. I was just you know getting into guns, and obviously liked Palmetto because their stuff was cheap. I remember walking into that store and being like, first of all, why the hell don't we have one of these in Kansas City? <laughs> Second of all, there is too much to choose from. I walked out of there with nothing yeah, because there was I couldn't make up my mind. Like the amount of AR-15 stuff, and that was back when before they came out with a dagger and, yeah. and the AK guns. But the amount of gun stuff that was in there, I was like. It's overwhelming. I was so overwhelmed I walked out with nothing. <laughs> yeah, there was a gun shop that was actually right down the street from here. And you could go in and literally build your whole AR, and they had different parts, colors, and everything. So why why don't why aren't there more shops like that? It's so they're based out of that that area. Mm. So a lot of their business is online. So I think for them, it's more of you know with the internet, everybody everybody just buys. They probably internet. have to charge more if they had shops like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of their website they have like daily deals. Yeah. Where if it's on their website, they don't have that deal in the store. You have to buy it from the website, mm. which I learned. I went there. Yeah. They're the largest, what, online gun store, they said. Mm-hmm. One cool thing that they are doing this year for SHOT Show 2024 is, I'm going to bring this up. So they do, they've actually come out with like a lot of innovative guns. Like they have their own version of the AK-47. Obviously, AR-15s is their main thing. They came out with a dagger. And with this year... What they're doing, and I'm going to share the screen here, is they have a lot of other guns, like, developed. Is that an Uzi? The Jackal? Yeah. Yeah. It looks cool. So they are actually taking, they have, like, a list of concept guns. So these are all concept guns right now. And their thing is, this year, all of these are on display at SHOT Show 2024. But you have to vote on which ones you pick two, pick two or three of them. On which ones you want them to actually? I already see one I come out to make. Yeah, <laughs> three A jackal. <laughs> so the jackal is cool, and the cool thing about the jackal is uh, one of the guys that works for PSA wanted a gun named after him, so they named the jackal after him. I like the three hundred eight. Looks like a Scar seventeen. Yes. So these are cool, and I mean, obviously we're in the. They got daggers. They're coming out with a twenty two. There's a, a forty five version. Um, they got the old can that looks like a bullpup one. Yep. Shotgun. That 570 looks... pump. That actually takes 870 furniture. So that, <laughs> I mean, that... It looks just like that gun. Yeah. Right, it does. And so there's the 45 tactical dagger. Um, they got another bolt gun that they're coming out with. Is that the same shotgun that's up here? No. The one <laughs> up there is a, a Mossberg. So all the gun co- companies just make guns just like... They, all, they just make the same thing over and over again. Right? At different but prices. They copy I bet other. you this 570 pump shotgun will be way cheaper. Even though Mossbergs aren't expensive, I'm pretty sure this one would be cheaper. Hmm. And then they got a bolt gun. This will be their first bolt gun. Hmm. Um, I mean, this PSA 57, I mean, that looks pretty yeah. dope, honestly. And then they got the Sabre Enhanced M4. That looks like a sick AR 15. Huh. They got the full size daggers. They got a 10 millimeter dagger. This thumper. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Like, That's what is a that? freaking awesome name. Yes. It, looks like, like it sounds locker. like a gun in Halo, yeah. right? Like, the Thumper. <laughs> so these are all the guns that they are showing at SHOT Show, but you have to vote on which ones you want oh, man. to come out. I'm assuming these are all going to eventually oh, yeah, be I'm out, sure. but um, I think it says you can only pick two, three. Choose so three options. Three. Oh my gosh, that'd be hard. So if you guys are watching YouTube videos <laughs> and have an idea of which one, the thumper, the jackals are pretty cool. Though, yeah, you know? I mean that looks like a scar straight. Right. Up. So I mean, I I would assume a few years down the line we're going to see all those offered by PS, uh, PSA because they've obviously put in the research and have. Or they'll just these do them all of them. <laughs> right. Just vote on them all. Yeah. How do you make? So if that there's that shotgun right there, and then there's a shotgun that you just showed us. That's a concept, right? Concept, but it looks like the exact same gun. So what research has gone into it to make it less expensive or a better gun? Like what makes it better? Well, when he's he did his thing, he was talking about he's not there for profit. So mm-hmm. they might have the same parts and the same hardware, but he's doing it at just charging less. Yeah. So they're not making every part. 
They they're, they do make a lot of their parts. Really? Yeah. There's some parts that they don't make. Like I think you said something about the frames of the. Yeah, some of the polymers. Yeah. Were those make. all guns made by that company? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I see. Okay. These are Sorry. all guns that are. I'm a little slow. So Sorry. these are all concept guns that they've yeah. they've done the re they've used the profits to do the research and develop these guns, mm -hmm. but they don't want to put a bunch of money into making all these guns at once. So they want to see what people want the most. They're going to release those guns. And then I would assume eventually all these will be options okay, so. down the road. And and that's kind of cool. I mean, like, what what goes into R&D of developing a firearm? Yeah. Like, I'm sure it's not an easy process I mean, or a cheap process. So from the outside looking in, it looks like you take a Glock and you go, <laughs> okay, let's just make our own. Am I, but, um, but what else? Make what it else right. Better? How can yeah. we make this a, either better or, yeah, affordable? Or both. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's been so many companies out there trying to replicate Glocks. Yeah. As as one example, and all have fallen short. I think Palmetto State Armory has done the best. Yeah. And their and I've tried this. Their upper will fit a 19 lower, yeah. and vice versa. It's crazy, and all the parts are kind of interchangeable. Gen hmm. three specific. Yeah. But it's kind of cool. And okay. I mean, if you can buy basically a Glock 19 for 250 bucks, yeah. 300 bucks, at, you know, hell yeah, yeah. The trigger's not the best, but and the sides, that's thick. That's the sides are a little bit. Different. Well, and you can, and they have options on yeah. the website to where you can choose if you want night sights, if you want regular sights, yeah. uh, suppressor height sights, if you get the threaded barrel. Like, there's all sorts of options. The colors, yeah, are another option. Like, it's crazy. Well, I thought that was really cool. Of of yeah, the CEO to kind of give that backstory in there and the reason why they're cheap, and then the history too is the history crazy. is kind of cool. Yeah, I definitely recommend checking out that podcast if you were like me and thought, oh, it's just cheap stuff, and it's probably why it's so cheap. No, it's actually because they they don't want to make a lot of money. Yeah, it's kind of cool. If you guys like this content, check out the full episode coming out this Friday on the Workbench After Hours podcast. Hit that like and subscribe button so you can be notified when we come out with more content and stay in tune with the podcast. You can also listen to audio only on Spotify and all those listening platforms.